Hello everyone. Yeah, so um, first of all, big shout out to the Norfolk Fermi. Um, yeah, we had a meet up yesterday, so that was really good. And the reason I mention them, aside from the fact, you know, lovely bunch of people, um, is that I got talking to Foxy Paws, who's a photographer, and he asked me about the comic and just the process of how it gets put together. And I and I realised like we've kind of done individual videos touching on different bits but we haven't really talked about the process so in effect what this video is is going to be a broad like not like one-to-one -one perfect but a broad indication of the process that goes into making each issue and hopefully this will give you a bit more of an understanding of how the process works everyone that's involved and not being funny but the amount of work that goes into it now with this like I say, we'll be going over different bits, so it's going to be more of an overview. However, if you do have any specific questions, feel free to put them in the comments below. If, like I say, we get enough sort of comments on a similar thing, if we get an interesting question, we might have follow-up videos. But for now, I'm going to try and focus, so let's get started. Okay, everyone, so first of all, we are now going to talk about the writing stage hence using this as an illustration and not just to make this next bit easier to edit but you know when I think you first get started with an idea I recommend writing your ideas down and the thing is it doesn't matter if um, say for example you know you work full-time or you're doing other things every little bit that you get down is a little bit of progress and eventually that will give you the bare bones when you start writing the script and this is what we're, we're going to talk about so we're going to talk about like the broad bits and pieces that make up a script so i'm going to try and edit in a um a, a sample just so you get an eye you get an idea of the kind of thing we put in and i'll try and do this for the next bit as well um so what we start off with so in the case of the rain city comics we are talking a 40 page script so this is a change from when we did it with the original webcoin which was 22 pages and the reason was it was to kind of give us a bit more room in terms of telling the story and also because we wanted to do one a year as opposed to trying to do a number in, in the year which just people didn't have time for it didn't work and this led to like people coming in and out and people complaining about the inconsistency in terms of the artwork and the story so therefore it made more sense to kind of broaden out the process. So first up, you have your script page, and I tend to do on the first page. I tend to do like what you know a sort of single image just to kind of draw you in to kind of establish the mood, almost like the equivalent of an establishing shot in a in a film. And it gives you an idea of where this story is going, the setting, what is happening, so you're kind of thrust into the action pretty quickly. And what you will notice on these pages is that you will have, you know, the you know the, the page number and panel one, two, three, four. Generally speaking, I recommend keeping it to a maximum of four to six, unless you want to have like several little details, such as like little close-ups. So you might be able to get more in. But bear in mind, whatever you're asking an artist to do, kind of the more you ask them to do, the more work it's going to be for them. So got to try and balance it out it's, it's not always easy because as a writer it's easy to get overexcited and to think I can put in anything and while you technically can remember someone's got to draw it and the same goes for when you do the dialogue because a lot of people with script writing and when I first started out me included you get very excited about the dialogue because you think of Kevin Smith films and you think about oh I'm gonna say this really smart thing and everyone's gonna love this really smart dialogue but the thing is you've only got so much room within you know the text bubbles within within the captions so it's best to let the visuals do the talking as much as possible now there will be some scene setting that you have to do and what i think has been pretty good for us with this reboot is to do a caption box at the bottom in effect sort of working as narration and often from the character's perspective because then it kind of puts you in their world and you're kind of seeing it from their perspective you're seeing it from you know where they do it so for example in issue two we had sal and the framing device was she was talking to dr Auntie, and 
whilst talking about her past, her captions were in effect narrating the flashbacks of what happened in her life leading up to that point, and I'm not going to go into it too much because there are spoilers, but we do have some fantastic um, read-through videos that will give you a taste of this. Um, so yeah, there's, there's that. Um, what was I thinking? Um, yeah, so yeah, so so you get the you get the idea. So you want some dialogue, you want some captions, but where possible, think about the visuals. Now, the other side with this is to be careful how you do this, because when you're working with an artist, you want to be specific in terms of what you want, but not so much that you take away a bit of freedom from the artist. So, like an artist could put easter eggs in the background they could add their own kind of style to it which is why personally and again I see people disagree with this and that's fine this is why I like working with different artists I like different looks so for example with issue one um, Nicholas Webb and Strider Sid's style was very much anime influenced and that style is great and I absolutely love it and I think it looks fantastic but equally you have um, Joe's style with issue two, which is more in the kind of Asterix, um, more a more kind of European style, which is a bit odder and a bit quirkier, and like as I say, the way he sort of messes about the sound effects and the sort of the exaggerated faces and actions, I think are absolutely tremendous. I think they're great. With issue three, um, what I really liked with that one was that Emily Bandicoot has a very sort of sort of kawaii kind of big eyes exaggerated style and it contrasts really well with the darkness in the story and I, I personally like that like I say um, to quote casually comics mileage may vary but um, each of those styles just brought something each to the story and it was distinctly those artists and their style which is tremendous and likewise with issue 4 coming up we've got an artist with a very distinct look as well which is great I want that now whether you do or not I can't tell you but that's my opinion so yeah so what we then have in this at this point you know we know the artist so we have this writing style set up and we broadly do this for about 40 pages and I don't want to get too much into it because as I say we've spoken about this before but the general principles of you know beginning middle and end where do you want to go where's the kind of arc of where the story's going there's these different things to figure out and which is why i strongly recommend getting some good feedback because this will then help you craft the next draft which will then make it tighter and then of course you then approach an artist and this is another part of the writing phase because i personally recommend talking to them first and saying do you understand what i'm saying is this good for you because some artists will want more direction than others some will get it and get on with it and they're fine and that's cool there's nothing wrong with that provided you know that they're cool and they do what you ask them to do because otherwise they could end up sort of redoing a load of work and we don't want that but some people like they they might say oh can you give me some reference material can you be a bit more specific and then like I say you might rejig the script in order to you know sort of balance it for them because like I say some people will want more information it's not a one-to-one -one thing it's a bit like um, if you've got like a like you're doing like a study project at school and some people will need a bit of help more than others so like you know some people might be able to do the research part really well but they're not so good at the presentation side and likewise some people you know they'll do certain bits really well but not so much others but you know, like I say with the writing phase with that then means you sort of tighten it up to what they want and like I say, feedback is really important. I recommend getting at least one person to look over it. And I, I've seen some people sort of say like, oh, but what, you know, what if you know they react badly to what you say? Well, you've got to gauge for yourself whether or not you take the feedback on board because sometimes you might hear what someone has to say and say, okay, I appreciate what you're saying. I personally don't agree with it, even though I respect your opinion. Just because you don't follow someone doesn't mean you don't respect it. It's just because you have a certain idea and you know you may not well come now a lot of the time people will give you something that you don't expect so I had this um, talking with an artist who didn't end up working on 
the comic itself, but did some like promo stuff for us. So you know, thank you, Natalie. And they talked about like how I used language and that you were using this kind of very sort of positive type of language for a very sort of negative situation. And it was like, that's a good point. I hadn't thought of that, and I wouldn't have thought of that. But when they said it, it totally made sense, and it made the story stronger. So, yeah, anyway, so that is, broadly speaking, the writing side of it. I mean, like I say, it's my favourite part. I love doing the writing side of it. It is, so, like, especially when you do, like for me, I love the first draft. I love sort of just getting all the ideas out there and getting it down there, and it's really satisfying. But, you know, some, some people, as I say, they... They will have different approaches, and we have spoken about this before. If you have any specific questions about writing, by all means comment below, by all means ask questions, because we can cover that. But, having got to that part, we are now going to talk about art. Okay, so we've already initially touched on the first kind of conversation you have with the artist. Now, what I really recommend when you go through this process is to try and cover as much as you can in that, that initial discussion. So, what they're comfortable with doing, what your pay structure is, or what you can do for them in terms of what benefits your project offers. Again, we've talked about this in the past. And I do recommend, like I said, going over the other Creative Tips videos because we go into that in more detail. So those bits are important. In terms of the actual project itself, it is very important that the artist knows what you're talking about. So, for example, an artist might look at the script and say, I don't understand, is this when the character is in human form or in fox form? Or, I don't know how to sort of convey this thing that you've put in the script can you give me details and like I am in no way shape or form an artist I mean I like to doodle because it you know sort of de-stresses me in between stuff but if you can give someone like a, like a rough idea of what you're what you're after some sometimes it can help because sometimes people are more visual and they may not necessarily get it from the script. And, and again, that's okay. Likewise with studying, people are different, and if that helps them, then do what you can to help them, because it cuts out problems down the line. And like I say, people work in different ways, so often you will get people that then sort of go on to, well, like I say, after they have ascertained what they want from the script, going into what they call the penciling stage, now, a little sidebar on this, um, one thing we've done, which I personally recommend, is anyone who works on the comic, they also do the cover. Because I think one thing that I get a lot with people is that they're very keen to do covers, they're very keen to do commission work, and I don't blame them. It's, you know, in some cases it's how people make money, in some cases, well, a lot of cases, it's the thing that gets them most attention don't blame them you do what you got to do therefore I think it makes sense that someone who's put a lot of work in and like I said in this instance you know a lot of work it's only fair that they get the attention for that as well I think so I that's why I think we kind of done did that as a thing and so some, some people do the cover first and kind of that kind of gets them into the right headspace others do it last again nothing right or wrong you do it however you want. Um, but yeah, so, so there's, there's that. And then a lot of people, like I say, they do an initial penciling stage. And it might be they do this a page at a time. It might be that they do all the penciling in one, one section and then move on, move on, move on. No right or wrong. It's just how you do this. And with the penciling stage, this is very good for you as a writer because it gives you the chance to then say to the person... Right, okay, this looks good, but what you've got to look out for is this, this, and this, or that character shouldn't look like that because that's not what I meant. Because sometimes you, you can think you've worded something carefully and someone's misunderstood. We're all human, we've all done it. Like, like that's not blaming anyone, it happens. So, yeah, 
you've got to be very specific. You've got to sort of try and catch these things as early as possible because then that reduces the workload as much as possible, which is what we want. And then, like I say, it's all kind of set up. And like I said, different people will sort of do it different ways. They might do like sketch out thumbnails first. They might do they do the penciling first, or they might do it a page at a time with all the stages in one. None of these things are right or wrong. They're just different ways of working. And provided you get it done within the time frame, you do it how you want. That's fine. But that's 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 step one. And then after that, you've got inking. So the idea of inking is in effect that you add this layer of you know, ink. So there is now more of a digital side to these things. Um, and it means, like I say, you put emphasis on certain sections. And it sort of can change the look in terms of like how something is shaded, how something is presented. And again, what we've tried to do is to try and simplify this process where it's either one artist or someone who's working in conjunction with someone that they know. Because in the past, I've tried to have like a whole team on it and different people in different places. And it just, it's really hard and I don't recommend it. I recommend keeping it as simple as possible. I mean, in the ideal world, if you're doing this for yourself, then, you know, you could do this at whatever level you're comfortable on if you're doing this yourself. But, you know, broadly, I'm assuming <laughs> that this is from my position, because I can only tell you my experience, really, is keep it simple, keep working with, like I say, one or two people. And, like I said, one of the reasons we switched it to 40 pages over the course of a year is to try and give as much time as possible, which I just think is the fairest the fairest way. And it's, and it's not easy, and even then, it's still a lot of work, and I appreciate it's a lot of work. But that's what you as an artist have to do. You have to kind of take a step back and think, before I take this on, how much work am I getting through? Can I do this in line with like whatever other job I've got, whatever commitment I've got? But only you can answer that. You've got to, because I know people don't like to say no. And in some respects, that's a good thing. You, you want people to be passionate. But you do have to kind of have that conversation with yourself as well. And I can't really say whether or not as an artist whether that works for you and I think some you know they sort of learn from experience whether or not something works and that's fine but yeah so like I said you're at the inking stage everything now has that kind of more precise look and then we move on to the colours and again with the colours the good thing is, is that you can give them references and say this is the colour schemes for different characters this is what we want, want from that and again you can be reasonably consistent with that that's good um, ideally you should have kind of character pages but you might not always have that but provided there's some level of reference, you're usually okay. So then, like, you get all the pages coloured. And then the final part of this is the lettering. And the lettering can be really good because, again, it allows you to change the emphasis of certain things. It kind of sets the mood of the story. So, you know, sometimes, like, for example, if, if a story like I say if you want to sort of convey a person's emotional um, feelings you, you can sort of slightly change it you know you can have a bit of fun with it which, which I, I, can't, I can't like doing and sometimes you know you might kind of change like the colour of, of something and just to kind of give it a slightly different look like say if you want to emphasise that something is a flashback or a um, dream sequence or what have you like there, there's options there's ways of doing things and Again, like you say, you can use it to, say for example, if you've got more than one person offering their perspective, you can sort of do different fonts or different coloured boxes. There's, there's a few different options with that. And so, again, like I said, that'll be done over the course of 40 pages. Um, and then eventually, like I said, that is all done. And then finally, we have to put this together to um, get it out to the shop. So this final section is what I call putting it together. Now sometimes you'll have an artist and they'll be able to take all their pages, look at it according to the script and put it together in a PDF so you're done, which is great and ideally it would be good to have a high res version for printing, but you know, there are ways around these things. Um, and then like I say, once you're then done, you then go to your person, so I, either you're someone who can update this yourself in which case brilliant or in my case you say you're working with someone who updates the website and you get it out to them 
and they add the issue to the website. Brilliant, awesome, done. And like I say, we've got things like Kofi and what have you. And then you sort of, like I say, upload them, put them up there. And the great thing is now, like, there are sites. So if, say, for example, you don't have someone who can put together a PDF for you, you can go online and you can find websites where you can put together the PDF yourself. And like I say, it's varying degrees of success, but like some, some are a bit more kind of intuitive than others. But I do recommend it because it does just kind of cut out a lot of hassle. Um, and you know, there are times where I wish I had that kind of when we first did this. Um, but it's fine, you know, like I say, live and learn. You know, like the old Orson Welles quote about, you know, experience is what people call their mistakes. It's true. Um, but yeah, like I say, the, you then have your PDF, it's then done, and then, like I said, our next point is, uh, so we use a company called Minuteman Press, and we take the PDF and we go to them and say, we want X amount of comics, and we then distribute them to shops, and at this point, um, like I said, you then talk to the shops, say, like, how much you want to charge for these things for. Bear in mind, if you're working with a um, comic shop, they are going to take a cut, so you are going to have to work this out in a way that kind of balances things, like these things out. So, for example, you know, crowdfunding and sponsorship that can help offset the costs a bit. So, ideally, you want to be in a situation where you're not charging too much for the comic, and it, it's a tricky balance. But if you get it right, generally speaking, it works. And like, like I say. We've been very lucky with people like Canary Comics who have been very smart in terms of being proactive and getting it out there. But it is your it is your thing as well. So once it's on the shelf, don't stop. Don't just kind of admire it. You've got to get it out there. You've got to talk to people about it. You've got to do videos. You've got to try and find methods to kind of talk about it. So maybe see if like someone has a video channel whether you can get a shout out whether you could sponsor a video like find ways of promoting it because there, there are ways and means and you know you, you, you'd be surprised what you can do and I think with a, you know a, a good approach there's there's ways and means of doing this and we've talked about promotion before and again that's another video but it's all part of the process because you have to get it out there in order for you to keep doing this, you know, the selling side of it is important as well because this is what gets get out there, this is what gets people talking, and you have to make people aware of it. it. It's it's a process. It's a process where you have to keep getting people out there. And this is the tricky element. When we talk about putting this whole project together, there is the time process, and I really recommend, if you can, keep to deadlines, keep working with each other keep communicating because you don't want a situation and obviously this happens in other industries video games you do not want a crunch situation you do not want someone working really hard getting really stressed out because it's not good for them it's not good for their health this shouldn't be like that which is why like I say we put this process of having it as a co over the course of a year because then if you schedule out your time as an artist and I freely admit the artist has the harder job. This is, this, there's nothing, no way around it. There is more detail that you've got to do. There is more that you have to consider. There's, you know, like I said, the, the visual process takes time, and it is, I would say, more energy than what goes into to write the script. Like the script process takes time. Art, you know, creating story arcs takes time. All of it is hard work. It, you know, the writing side is hard. I'm, I'm not doing it down. I'm a writer, so I'm not doing that down in the slightest but what I will say is if you're an artist keep in contact that is really important if someone asks you a question either get back to them as soon as you can or if you're busy because it's okay things happen let them know and then give them a time frame and stick to the time frame so if, so if you say you will get back to someone within a week then you get back to them within a week because it is just making sure that you know you're keeping them updated and it's, it's difficult I get that it's difficult I get that everyone involved with these kinds of projects has their own lives has their own stuff to deal with 
So that, broadly speaking, this is the whole process going from initial script all the way through to getting it into the shop. Like I say, this is a very broad overview. I appreciate that. But if you have any specific questions regarding these specific elements, then I want to hear from you. And a big, big reminder that I am incredibly grateful to all the people that have bought copies of the comic, who have, like for example, Carl Johnson, who put several reviews on Goodreads for us. I really appreciate that. Um, like I say, all the Patreon backers, um, like uh, Van Hikari, uh, Lissa, um, Tim, um, Tom, you know, lo lots of people, you know, who've all put their money down. Um, Leo Lyons, lo lots of them, and, ob and obviously the people who have worked on this comic because it literally can't happen without the people that have these skills. So, as I say, Nicholas and Sid for issue one, terrific. Joe, terrific. Emily, terrific. Saturn, who's currently working on issue four. I'm really looking forward to the point where I can show you the first initial teaser trailer for issue four because what we're doing, like I said, I'm trying to say this without spoiling too much, but in effect, issues one to three of Rain City Chronicles are one arc where you kind of get to know the characters and you get them to a certain point. And issue four is the bit beyond that point that then sets up the next big arc, if you like. And I don't really want, I don't really want to say much more than that. I think if you've read these stories, then you know what I'm talking about. And if you've read the original webcomic, then you know what I'm talking about. And yeah, so um, that's that's great. Um, obviously, the other big thing as well with the YouTube channel, I recently changed the name of this web, uh, web uh, <laughs> YouTube channel um, to the update channel for a couple of reasons. One, because just putting Rob Turner didn't really explain what this was, and two. The fact is, I am not the only contributor to this channel. We have had some awesome um, guest contributors. We have obviously had voice actors like Hayley Evanet, AJ Dean, Holly Harrington Bull, Simon Michael Morgan. Um, we had, like I say, additional um, guests on board like Bonehead Brian, who like, did the interview or role for one of the videos. We've had, you know, we had uh, Karen Black and Richard Bourne doing, doing the quiz for us. We've had. Yeah, we've had a few different, and I would love it if we could get more people contributing like this. So, for example, we've been doing Meet the Team videos, and I would love it if we could get more people kind of talking about their role within the comic as well, because there's a whole bunch of people that have worked on this. And it's absolutely amazing, and I'm really chuffed with this. And, and like I say, I, I am always kind of touched and inspired by the effort people put into this. So yeah, so um, as I say, keep an eye out for an upcoming update on issue four. Um, we also, of course, have um, John's um, comic channel. So if you're someone who, say, didn't read the original web comics, or you did and you want to kind of have a little recap of what went on before, go to that channel. He kind of, he gives them, you know, sort of a more kind of dynamic look because the video just lets you put it on and he you know uses the soundtrack very well and he gives you a good intro so that's fantastic um yeah so i think that kind of covers everything um and again as i say any questions by all means ask much love Mwah.